then I take the excess heat from cold fusion and couple it to a motor. There is, this isn't perpetual motion. We will tap out the system, and I will show you that today, that in fact, the second law is conserved. We're not discovering anything new here. This is classical physics, whereas what's different is it's done in a lattice. This is recent results from the NSF EPRI meeting of October 1989, which was the very first time that people uh, learned from Fleischmann Pons that excess heat comes out in bursts. And these four talks cor corroborated the fact that you can now get excess heat on demand in the, uh, using the code deposition kind of uh, procedure that Mitch talked about. Some of the things that we believe we've observed, you know, questions of are there X-rays, gamma rays, alpha particles, MeV protons, neutrons, elemental transmutation, visible underwater melting, and even acoustic explosions. These have all been presented in the refereed literature. Over 17 papers that have been published by the Spayward Group since this field began in 1990 for us. We did this experiment, three days of electrolysis, and we observed in the track below the electrolyte, below the nickel cathode in air, was nearly 1,800 tracks, and it translates to 3,000 per centimeter square, which is about 200. I was really jumping and happy that I finally saw it with my own eyes. This period here is loading. The pressure drops during the glow as the deuterons go into the uh, palladium. Palladium deuteride has a higher transition temperature than palladium hydride, and the BCS would have predicted the opposite of that. So it was considered anomalous. 